Oh, USB type C, how I love you. Let me count the ways. First, I plug it in just once. Second, I plug it in just one time and it works. And third, I only plug it in a single time and then ta-da, it works. Can you tell that USB type A kind of got on my nerves? But USB type C isn't just cool because it's reversible. It's also compact, low cost, minimizes power supply clutter, and can deliver a whole lot of data and power. But that last bit, that's super cool. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. USB Type-C power delivery was created to standardize medium and higher levels of power delivery. But it can also support negotiations for multiple output voltage levels and is backward compatible with previous versions of USB. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Bruce Rose from CUI Incorporated and I explore the benefits of USB Type-C power delivery. The specific communications protocol of USB Type-C power delivery and examine why USB Type-C power supplies and connectors are the way of the future for consumer electronics. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from CUI Incorporated. Hi, Bruce. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about USB power delivery today. But Bruce, can you first set the stage for us? What kind of components are we talking about here? Okay, well, let's look at a little history of USB to talk about that. And that is that USB universal serial bus was first designed as a standard for data communications in personal computers. And so it was envisioned for very low bandwidth data communication, things like mice, keyboards, USB memory sticks, that sort of thing. And oh yes, by the way, they included a little bit of power in with the data communication. So it started at five volts, 100 milliamps, which is about a half a watt, not a whole lot of power. All right. So when it comes to USB connectors, there are a couple different kinds, right? But how are they different? Yes, you're absolutely correct. The first connector was a type A connector. It's the one that we are perhaps most familiar with. And it's a little rectangular connector. It's on USB thumb drives and many other applications. And that served very nicely, but it had some downsides. It was non-reversible, rectangular in shape, which is fine. It's just a descriptor. It was low cost because it's standardized. But it was non-reversible. It was orientation specific, meaning that you could insert it, try and insert it upside down, but it wouldn't work. And so then as time went on, people said, well, the USB-A connector is wonderful, but it's a little bigger than I need. And so they developed the mini A and micro B connectors. And they, as was the A connector, are non-reversible. They were trapezoidal instead of rectangular. I don't know if that really is good or bad. They were compact, which is nice. Again, they were low cost, but as I mentioned, non-reversible or orientation specific. And so after a bit of time, the USB consortium came up with a much improved connector that we call the type C connector. And this one first off is reversible. And I'm going to make the claim that it actually allows you to plug in the connector three times faster than the type A or the mini and micro Bs. And that is, you could say, well, how can you quantify three times faster? And that is because at least for me, I take the type A or the others, I plug them in and they don't fit. I go, oh, must have it upside down. So I plug it in the other way. It still doesn't fit. So I look at it, I go, no, I had it right the first time. And I'm more careful when I plug it in. So it takes three attempts to plug it in. The type C eliminates that because it's reversible. There is no top and bottom of it. You just plug it in and off it goes. So it is much faster to plug it in, much less frustrating. The shape is a flat oval. They've rounded some of the corners that I think help to make it plug in a little easier. It is compact. It's closer to the size of the mini A and micro B than it was to the type A. It's been designed, although we're talking about 
power. It's also been designed to support very high data rates, which the data transfer people are very excited about. When we talk about power, the power handling capability of the type C is much greater than the type A or mini A or micro B did. So again, that's beneficial. And then to reemphasize, the, it is not orientation specific, so it's less frustrating and much faster to use. Now, Bruce, I heard that there are some new regulations in terms of USB-C. Yes, and this, I think, personally is rather exciting from many different perspectives, and that is the European Union has mandated that starting in 2024, new products of certain categories, such as cell phones, tablets, headphones, mice, navigation systems, laptops, kind of personal electronics, if you want to think of it as that, must use the USB Type-C connector. And the reason for this is to create a standard. We all have drawers or boxes full of external power supplies with unique connectors. And yes, the voltage may be right, the current may be right, the power may be proper, but the connector doesn't work. And so what the European Union is suggesting is, oh, if we can standardize on a specific connector, then we can eliminate a lot of this excess power supply clutter. Okay, so Bruce, let's talk about Type-C, particularly for power supplies. Okay, so first off, we have already released power supplies which support this Type-C connector. There's a picture here, and it's a little hard to see because it's a white case in a white background, but it's a desktop supply with a Type-C plug on it. And similarly, there is a wall plug unit with a type C receptacle. So these are already out there and available. And then there's also type C connectors that are available because the power supply where the power supply in, but the load needs the proper receptacle. And so those receptacles are also available from CUI Bell and many other vendors. Okay, so we also need to address the power delivery protocol here as well, right? How has that helped USB Type-C power delivery? Okay, so power delivery is an interesting concept. It was an addition when USB-C came out. One option is you can still deliver 5 volts at I think it's 3 amps with nothing else being done. Just that's the default. But this idea of, well, maybe users would like to have other voltage levels, other power levels, and that makes the USB-C connector much more universal, much more beneficial. And if you remember back, we talked about the European Union standardizing on a particular connector being the USB-C. Well, now it really becomes versatile because, oh, If we have this concept called power delivery, it defines certain voltage levels. And the initial release, version 3.0, defines 5 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, and 20 volts. And then it also has current levels up to 5 amps at 20 volts or 100 watts. So now the question is, okay, I have this one plug. How do I know which voltage is going to come out of it? And there's negotiation that occurs between the load and the supply to set the proper voltage level. One of the concerns was, okay, well, that's great going forward. I have these supplies and loads with the internal communication and they can do this negotiation. Suppose I have an older product and I don't want to redesign the product, but I want to be compatible with what's going on new with this connector, what can I do there? And the answer is the connector is backwards compatible. And either you can use a just an electromechanical adapter, there's no electronics in it that converts a USB-C back to a USB-A style connector or vice versa. Or you can put in a USB-C connector and still run it without communications and you'll be able to take advantage of the 5-volt power delivery through the USB. And so all this helps to minimize the power supply clutter that the European Union was aimed at because now you can have one power supply with one connector design working for many different applications. If it plugs in and things aren't working quite right, it does not damage anything because everybody is compatible with 5 volts. It may not operate properly. Load may not operate, but it won't be damaged. So now we have talked about power delivery and communication. And power delivery doesn't require communication, but it works best if there is communication between the load 
and the source. And so with USB power delivery 3.0 version, we can negotiate up to 5 amps, which is 100 watts. There's also a recently released USB power delivery 3.1 that's referred to as extended power range. And this will go up to 240 watts maximum. Now, to get that high of power, it specifies output voltages of 28, 36, or 48 volts up to 5 amps. If you think about it, 100 watts allowed us to power a lot of the equipment I talked about earlier. When we're up at 240 watts, it allows all of a sudden all sorts of different loads to be applied that this USB-C power delivery can now properly power. That at 100 watts, we are able to power a lot of the personal electronics that I talked about. And you can think of a lot of other equipment that's less than 100 watts. But at 240 watts, most things that are easily carried probably consume less than 240 watts. We're talking about displays and laptops and just about anything you can think of that's easy to carry around. And so now USB-C is truly very universal. We need both the source and the load to have communication. This communication is some standardized controller chips that are available from many vendors and easy to use to create this communication. So, Bruce, can power delivery with USB Type-C still work with no communication? Yes, it can work with no communication. Now, this slide may be a little confusing. The left side, what it's trying to show, the upper gray box, it's labeled DFP for downward facing port. And what that is, is that's the source of the power. And you see the top box is labeled a power source. Then there's a controller. If the one is available, the controller controls this pass FET. And then there are two lines labeled CC1 and CC2. And then the lower grade box is the upward facing port UFP. And that you can think of as the load. In this particular case, it has a controller again, which will be an optional. It has a CC line and a VCON line. And the reason for the dashed X is that depending on the orientation of how you plug the plug into the receptacle, VCON and CC connect to CC1 or CC2 or CC2 and CC1. So there's two purposes of this connection the CC lines. One is it tells the equipment which orientation the USB-C plug was put in, and that's beneficial for data communication. But secondly, there's also, there's some little black boxes called RP and RD. And so you ask, can this be done without communication? Yes, these resistors, RP and RD, form the communication if the controllers aren't present. And by selecting the proper value of resistors, then it tells the load in the controller that only 5 volts will be delivered. So on the right-hand side, there's a, a lot of verbiage. What we're saying is you can have a non-communicating source and a non-communicating load. They'll both have resistors, in which case, great, it'll power up at 5 volts. If you have a communicating source and a non-communicating load, meaning the source has intelligence but the load doesn't, not a problem. The source will see the resistor values and set the voltage to the proper level. If you have a non-communicating source and a communicating load, meaning the source has no microcontroller in it, but the load does, the load again will see the resistors from the source and it will derive the right 5 volt power level. So yes, this can be done without communication. Okay, so Bruce, can you explain a bit more about what happens when the load is connected to the source? Sure, there's a little bit of communication goes on that's very simple and very quick and very efficient. So first off, what happens is the load applies 5 volts, so nobody gets hurt. The point there is that the sources and the loads have all been designed to be 5 volt tolerant. That's one of the definitions of using the USB-C plug or connector. You should design your source and load so it's 5 volt tolerant. It may not work properly, but it won't damage anything. So it starts with 5 volts and then the source, this is again presuming the source and the load both have microcontrollers for communication. The source will transmit, these are the voltages that I can deliver. 
the load will look at those choices and it will select which voltage it wants. So here's a case if the load says, okay, I'm communicating at five volts, but I really need 15 volts to operate properly. It will select 15 volts, presuming the source has said, I can deliver you 15 volts. Then the source will receive this selected communication from the load and it will set its output voltage properly. And then the source and the load continue to periodically communicate to ensure the connection is proper because what you don't want to have is somehow a uh, disconnect and then be supplying excessive voltage out there and damaging something. And if the communication is lost, everything resets to five volts again to be safe so that nobody gets hurt. So Bruce, what about high level power? Are there any special considerations to keep in mind for these applications? Yes. If you recall, we talked about the first versions of USB PD were limited to 100 watts. That's 20 volts and 5 amps. And although that's a moderate amount of power, the connectors can handle that without much concern. The concern comes that when you start going up to upwards of the 240 watts of power, then connecting and disconnecting that supply may cause problems arcing at the connector, if you will, and the cables need to be able to handle that much power. And so what the USB consortium has done is they have defined the behavior that needs to be done, the special cables. Typically, the high power cables will have intelligent communication in them to communicate to the load and to the source. And Similarly, the connectors actually have mechanical designs. So they do the proper making and breaking to prevent sparking. It will detect that when you are disconnecting the loads, so if you're drawing a large amount of current, it'll quickly drop the current and drop the voltage before the load has been totally disconnected so as to minimize the arcing. So yes, the USB consortium has considered that there may be some challenges when delivering the higher power levels and they have definitions of what to do or descriptions of what to do for the cabling and the connectors to take care of that. Excellent, Bruce. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you, Amelia, and to the audience. I hope you have a wonderful day. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from CUI Incorporated. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.